Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the film tongue extractor. Um, these are relatively straightforward, but if you, if you don't know, if you've never used one before and you don't necessarily know what how it's supposed to work, uh, it can be quite confusing. So I'm gonna do a close up walk through video of how one of these actually works and how to get the tongue out of the film canister if, you, if it's wound in all the way. Um, that makes getting um, the film out of the canister and onto the reel a lot easier, and especially if you do this outside. Um, and I'll demonstrate that along with um, uh, an extra tip at the end for how to make, uh, one other thing you can do to how to make this um, a lot easier to um, get onto the reel inside the dark bag. Let's go ahead and start. So I've got a second camera here uh, just so that I can demonstrate this using um, a point of view that actually will work for what we're doing. And so what we're gonna do Go ahead and start recording. All right, okay. So, now the way, the way this tongue extractor works, as you'll notice, is there's actually two pieces that slide apart like this. See that? And so how, what you wanna do is slide it to where both of the pieces are together. Basically, it's, it's all the way in and uh, then what you want to do is you take your canister and you slide in the tongue extractor right inside the slot there. And you go all the way up until this notch right here is all the way up against the felt. And then what you do is you take your thumb and you hold that in and you pull the first you basically extend the tongue extractor just like that, okay? Now, the key is now you turn the spool while you've got this, you turn it until you start to hear it click. You hear that? I'll do it with the microphone up really close. Okay, now that click tells you that the film inside the canister is in the right place. Once you hear that click, you then turn it the other way and you turn it the other way until it, you start to feel some binding happen. And you'll know, because it'll start to get stiff to turn. You don't want to force it, but you do want to turn it until it starts to, like right there, that's it, okay? Now, once you hit that spot, you push this back in and then holding this and then holding this, what you do is you pull it out and if you'll notice, voila, there is the tongue. Now the tongue you can pull out like so. Typically I pull it out about that far. That's really all the further you need to pull it out. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's pulled out a lot further than that just to load it into the camera that's exposed to light, but this is all you really need uh, to start with. Then what I do um, it, to take, to, to prep this, to get it ready to load on, on a reel inside the dark bag is I take my scissors and I snip this, let me hold this like so, and I basically snip this right along here, like that, okay? Now, one thing that I do, I didn't get that quite straight, 
working around a camera here. So we're going to, okay, there we go. Now one thing that I usually typically will do is I'll also snip the corners like this. And the reason why, so that you've got film that, that looks like that. Okay, now the reason why is if you've got these corners rounded like this, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll notice mine's not anywhere near perfect, but the reason why you do that is it makes it easier to load onto the reel without catching on stuff. Because a lot of times what happens is if you just snip it straight across, uh, the perforation makes the edge of the film um, a little bit weak and it folds in on itself really, really easily. And as a result, um, it, it, it tends to buckle in and make it hard to load to, to initially get the film started um, on the reel. So uh, that's typically what I do is I'll round the corners off. Like I said, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be enough to, to make it easy to, to get started on the reel itself. Um, and that's, that's all there is to it. I mean, that's how you extract the film from the, uh, the film tongue from the canister so that you can finish pulling it out inside the dark bag, cut it off right here, after all the film is pulled out and then load it onto the reel. But that's all you need to, to do that. So there you go. You now have a film canister that has the film out, the tongue is cut off, the corners are rounded off to make it easier to load onto the reel. And uh, at this point, it's just a simple matter of you're ready to put your Patterson tank or whatever tank you're using uh, plus the reel, plus this roll of film, plus the scissors um, into your changing bag or your dark bag and pull this out all the way, pull it all the way out of the canister, um, snip it off, and then load it onto the reel. Your alternative way of doing this, if you don't want to use one of these little tongue uh, extractors, is to... Uh, use a can opener. They, they make one specifically for opening film canisters, but any can opener will work if it's got the little rounded uh, ed, the, the uh, not can opener, sorry, bottle opener. Um, if you can use a bottle opener to also open this uh, where you basically pop the edge of the canister off. Um, and once that's done, you can, you can pull the spindle and the, and the, you know, the whole thing out altogether. I typically don't like to do that because that also means you have to cut the tongue off in the dark in the changing bag. And because you're not rounding the corners off because you can't see what you're doing, it makes it a lot harder to load uh, the, the, spin, the, the reel. And also, um, you're popping this thing open in the dark and it's got a ton of sharp stuff once it's popped open. It's really, really easy to cut yourself. Yes, you can do it, but um, it's less than ideal. The other reason why I prefer to do it this way is because, particularly in my lab, is because before I process it or do anything, I can, I can put a, a twin check sticker on, on here. And a twin, check, a twin check sticker, I'm having trouble speaking tonight, um, a twin check sticker basically is a little sticker uh, where one sticker, uh, a numbered sticker goes on the film um, and a matching numbered sticker goes on your customer's order form. Now for my own personal work, I still twin check all my film because it makes it easy to identify the film. So I basically can look in my film processing log and go, oh yeah, this film I you know twin check, you know, 0784 for example, was uh, you know, Kentmere 400, I processed it in Ilfosol 3 for however many minutes at, you know, whatever um, temperature and agitation and all that other stuff. So all of that I keep track of. And uh, for customer film that comes into my lab, I also, the order form, I also keep track of whose film belongs to who. Because last thing you want to do is <laughs> mix up customer's film. That's a really bad thing. So um, pulling the tongue out beforehand 
makes it a hundred times easier to keep track of customer film. So when the customer's film comes in, as I am, you know, opening the, the order, I twin check it, twin check sticker it right then and there, right as I'm processing it. So their film is with their, is matched up to their order form. Anyway, that's probably more detail than you want. The, the goal of this video was to just demonstrate how to get the tongue out using a, uh, a tongue extractor and that's, that's how you do it. This is also helpful if you <laughs> accidentally rewound your film and it went all the way up into the canister and you didn't shoot the film. If you have a tongue extractor, you can basically get the tongue back out, put the film back in the camera and, and then uh, use it as well. So if you don't have one of these, they're really useful to have, especially for 35 millimeter film because it makes getting out of a couple of sticky situations pretty straightforward. Um, anyway, that's that. I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then.